serving the Arklatex. This is KTBS Shreveport. On your side, Al Pierce, Liz Swain, meteorologist Ed Duranzi, and at Baswell Sports, this is Channel 3 News Nightcast. Good evening, everyone. Governor Edwin Edwards says it's time to realize the oil and gas industry can't save the state anymore. The governor began the legislative session today with an hour-long opening speech. He warned lawmakers that they simply can't rely on tax on increases and budget cuts clergy, to keep the budget wired together. The governor says legislators have to focus on the big picture, rewriting the state's tax code at a constitutional convention. Afterwards, the governor told reporters what he plans to do. I'm going to do exactly what I said. I'm going to lay it out there. It's my job as governor to lead and to provide direction. Uh, it's their responsibility to pick and choose and determine what ought to be passed and which, which should not be passed. I'm not going to argue with them or fuss with them. I'm simply going to do my job. I think they'll do theirs. And lawmakers will have plenty of bills to pick and choose from. Today alone, 365 proposed laws were filed. That number will likely skyrocket to 3,000 by the filing deadline, which is April 13th. Here are some of the items they'll be looking at. Senator Cleo Fields of Baton Rouge wants dress codes at elementary and secondary schools. There was one filed requiring boat owners to buy liability insurance. And a senator from Lafayette wants to make it mandatory to turn your headlights on during a rainstorm. Well, a Shreveport woman is in the hospital after being injured in a possible drive-by shooting. It happened around 7 tonight in the 1100 block of Foster Street. Emergency crews say the 16-year-old girl was shot in the left thigh. She was taken to the LSU Medical Center for treatment. Two suspects are reportedly behind bars in connection with this shooting. Police also responded to another possible drive-by shooting, this time on Buena Vista at North Pierre. No word yet on if anyone was injured in that incident. The Stop the Killing campaign focused on ending violence like drive-by shootings. Tonight, that campaign came to an end with a mass rally on the Shreveport Riverfront. Speakers from all over the city addressed the need to stop the violence in the city and make citizens aware of the small population that seems to be causing all the problems. Well, our main goal for this rally is a culmination. This month has been our awareness campaign, and tonight is a culmination of that effort. And we're prepared. We're going to announce what our plans are for phase two as we move out of the buildings and out into the streets where the problems really are. Reverend Joe Gant says the next phase is to take the group's message to the streets and into the schools. The group has also set up a 24-hour crisis hotline number. A nine-year-old boy is lucky to be alive tonight after a camping trip turned into a nightmare for him. Trevor Parton of Mayport, Texas, was headed back to his family's camp Sunday when he apparently accidentally shot himself. When he didn't return, more than 100 volunteers from all over East Texas combed the woods through the night to find him. Well, they did find him early this morning, alive and conscious but hurt. He was rushed to St. Michael Hospital for, for emergency surgery for a gunshot wound to the head. He's in critical but stable condition. The trial of Sevier County Sheriff Howard Jones was postponed today. Judge Jerry Ryan granted the prosecutor's request to transfer that trial from municipal court to a higher circuit court. Sheriff Jones is charged with driving while intoxicated and refusing to take a blood alcohol test. The Queen Police arrested him in February after his county-owned patrol car was involved in a three-car accident. A defense spokesman isn't happy about the change. So far, no new date has been set. The first-term sheriff, meanwhile, has said he will stay in office until his term expires at the end of next year. Well, he's got a big fight on his hands, but people say if anyone can win it, he can. Bossier Police Officer Chuck Spragans, who beat the streets, stomping out crime on a daily basis, is now trying to fight another battle, leukemia. As Nightcast reporter Jennifer Zeppelin tells us, the support of friends and family members has helped to ease the pain. December 25th of last year, Chuck Spragans went into the hospital. On Christmas Eve, doctors told him he had AMML, a form of leukemia. I was a little bit tired, never really fully rested, had bruises with knots under, come up with a small rash. Had it on my arms, my knees, and my leg. Since December, Chuck has undergone his first treatments, which his doctors say have been successful so far, but he faces much more. Over the next month, he'll begin stage two, which will help fight the leukemia cells. Because Chuck's immune system is at risk to outside germs, we had to suit up in hospital garb for this interview. Chuck is in great spirits and says a lot of that is due to the support of friends and family. The whole city of Bozier and everyone around is 
really been extremely nice to me and my family. It makes you feel real good. People I don't even know are calling and coming by. It makes you feel wonderful. One thing Chuck can't wait to get back to is his duties as a criminal patrol officer on the Bossier Police Force, and he's confident that will happen. I have no doubt I'll get better between the good Lord and the positive attitude. I'll beat it, hopefully. Chuck won't be battling the disease alone. Many fundraising events have been taking place to help Chuck, his wife, and four-year-old boy. This baby elephant will even do her part. A portion of the proceeds from the Great American Circus in Bossier tomorrow night will go toward helping the Spragans family. The cost of treating leukemia in the first year usually ranges between $100,000 to $200,000. Jennifer Zeppelin, Channel 3 News, Nightcast. By the way, a fund has been set up for Chuck at the American Bank in Bossier. The name of the account is under Charles Spragans. Well, another pigeon drop scheme for you to be on the lookout for. This scam, a variation on a favorite, has so far netted local con men and women $22,000. Shreveport police say the scam works on <coughs> greed. The operator shows a victim a large amount of cash. He or she promises a portion of it to the victim if that victim will first put up some good faith money. Officers say, don't forget, you don't get something for nothing. And there are some other con artists preying on Arklatex businesses. Tonight we got a call from folks at Moore's Goodyear on Linwood. Now someone tried to pass two stolen money orders totaling $525. These are just two of 7,000 money orders worth more than $4 million that were taken from Continental Express in Los Angeles. For a list of serial numbers from the stolen money orders, you can call our call three hotline at 861-KTBS. That's 861 861- well, this next story came straight from a call mm -hmm. to call three. The product regulators are cracking down now on labeling that is misleading to the public. Call three, Stephanie Williams has a report. Corrine Anderson is the mother of 10 children, and that means she buys a lot of groceries. Recently, she was putting up a bag of groceries when her two-year-old son, Bubba, called a bottle of lemon-scented bleach lemon juice. Well, I didn't pay it too much attention at first, so I went on and put the bags on the table, and I left and started doing some other things in my home. When Corrine left the kitchen, Bubba went for the bottle of bleach, still thinking it was something good to drink. He almost had the bottle open when Corrine walked back into the kitchen. This is not juice, Bubba. What is this? This is bleach. What is this, Bubba? That's a thing. No, it isn't. That's, that's bleach. And had I not gone in the kitchen, he would have gotten it open because he was convinced it was juice and he was going to get him some juice. Corrine, who is a teacher, says many young children associate with pictures. And the picture of a lemon on the bottle of bleach meant only one thing to Bubba, juice. They look at pictures and they associate that this is something good to eat. Exactly like the lemons that I buy. Corrine says Bubba was lucky, but the Product Safety Commission says picture labeling is a concern. However, there is no official policy to remove this type of labeling. A PSC spokesman says the policy isn't expected to be changed anytime soon and advises parents to place any lemon-scented products out of the reach of young children. Stephanie Williams, Channel 3 News, Nightcast. The Product Safety Commission and the Food and Drug Administration both recommend consumers contact the manufacturer of the product about the misleading labeling. Bubba was stopped just before ingesting the bleach, but many kids aren't as lucky. In a situation like this, you need to immediately call your local poison control center. If that number isn't handy, contact a pharmacist or a hospital emergency room. Some good news this evening for a few flooding victims in Bossier Parish. The parish has gotten the federal government to agree to buy out five homes whose houses chronically flood their in uh, Fifi Bayou. That's where it is in the Tall Timber subdivision and one also on Timber Ridge Drive in South Bossier Parish will be bought up by the feds. The appraisal process will start soon. The homeowners and the parish have been requesting the buyout for years. The homes were built in the floodplain before the parish had proper regulations. No word on how much money the government's going to spend. That all depends on the appraisals. Meteorologist Ed Duranzik joins us. We don't have to worry about flooding the next couple of days. Oh, no, 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 no. San Antonio may have set a rain record, but... Uh, oh, that was rough a yeah, few weeks ago. Yeah, not here. We're, we're high and dry for the Good. time being. And Good. lucky us, how long will it stay dry? We'll talk about that shortly.
The good and the bad. Channel 3 24-hour weather tell sponsored by Bozier Medical Center. Forecast and updates by staff meteorologist called 320-KTBS. Temperatures are dropping fairly quickly after 60s today. We're back down into the 50s and 40s in the area. We'll take a look at those temperature readings in just a second. First, let's review the morning lows across the Arklatex. 50 was Shreveport's morning low, and so far that is the low for the day. 52 degrees up in Texarkana, 51. El Dorado, a little warmer here before the front pass, 60 in Jackson, and Macomb reporting 61 for morning lows. And then you work your way westward into slightly cooler air, 31 degrees up in uh, Amarillo, 38 degrees for Lubbock this morning. Now temperatures did get up into the 60s here in the Arklatex. This is a uh, far cry from normal, about 70 or so. Right around there is typically a daytime high, 71 for Shreveport normally. It's 64 for that high today, 62 degrees up in Texarkana, 61 El Dorado. New Orleans reported 75, 77 down in Brownsville. That's more like it, but chilly air up north in Arkansas. Uh, Harrison, Arkansas, only reported 47 for a daytime high today. That's with a lot of clouds and that cold air moving in. It's clear in 52. That humidity is 77%. North wind 7 miles per hour. And the barometer is falling a little bit here at 30.12 inches of mercury. Some of the common readings, like 52 here in Shreveport, 55 Monroe, 54 El Dorado, 47 Texarkana, chilling off there pretty quickly, 52 Longview, and 51 degrees out in Tyler this late evening. Now, uh, satellite perspective of the weather going on across the country. Well, that's our storm system as it cleared out during the late afternoon and evening time. See some gray clouds there. They're gone now late tonight here. Now, here's the showers and thunderstorms. that did leave another little path of showers and hail and some high winds down south in central Florida. Once again, they got some more hail, and this is like the third or fourth time they've reported some very heavy storms across Florida. Look at all this cloudiness here concentrated over parts of Arizona and southern Nevada, a little bit of uh, California. Heavy rains going on at this time for those folks in that region. So, yeah, there's going to be a little flooding going on out there, and that's due to this storm system that continues to develop out here in the desert southwest. The upper levels are the better view of it. We'll get to that in a second, but here's our high pressure dominating our weather, drier air, clearer skies, a little shot of cool air. This will have an influence on our weather eventually down the road. First, let's look at the higher levels. Here's this upper air low off California here, sliding down and generating that upsloping here, moisture coming in, hitting the mountains, producing these showers and thunderstorms. And they will persist heading eastward. Here's that front coming down from the north, generating some light rains. Well, partly cloudy weather tomorrow night. It'll be clouding up and probably get some rain by Wednesday. Here's the 40s again tonight in the Arklatex. A little cool, 40s will be around the area. Uh, in the morning, but warming fairly quickly up into the 70s. Forecast is like this for the area, clearing and chilly around the region, 41 degrees. Expected to be that morning low, so dress warmly going out. 65 by noontime, sunny and mild, we'll say, for the most part, not bad at all. I should put down fair to partly cloudy in the afternoon time there, Liz and Al, but it'll be mild, 71 degrees for that daytime high. Variable winds 5 to 10, 6.05 a.m. sunrise and 6.34 p.m. sunset. The extended outlook calls for a little light rain Wednesday. Some rains Good for Friday's Thursday, nothing, no, no, no big deal for Friday. For, yeah, Friday, it's kind of chilly in the yeah. morning there, 38. Yeah. It may get cooler than that, but I have to watch that closely. And then Saturday, temperatures rebound, and can we get a good weekend in for a change? Hopefully so. And Sunday's daylight savings time. You got that. Hey, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Still to come on Nightcast, Ross Perot names a running mate. And baby Teresa dies, leaving behind a legacy of controversy. Stay here. The baby born in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, nine days ago without a full brain died today. But as Mark Potter reports, the legal controversy that sprang from her birth lives on. Hospital officials say Teresa Ann Pearson died at 3.45 this afternoon of respiratory failure and cardiac arrest with her family at her side. For her, I am going on. I don't stop. Uh, she gave me a lot of strength, a lot of knowledge, a lot of courage. Doctors believe they now will be able to transplant only the corneas from her eyes and they may be able to use some of her tissues for medical research. Over the weekend, most of her organs had deteriorated to the point they no longer could be transplanted to other children. On Saturday, she developed breathing problems, and doctors put her on a ventilator. 
Then late Sunday, they took her off again after her organs began to fail. Seeing the, the, the time go on and seeing the, you know, the suffering of the family and perhaps the child, uh, the decision was then made uh, not to continue. Also, the knowledge that continued time on the ventilator would make the organs less usable. Even though the baby's organs were no longer usable, attorneys for her family earlier today asked the Florida Supreme Court to declare her brain dead. That would have meant overturning a lower court ruling. We think that the court should address it or the legislature should address it so that we get a proper definition of what death is to these children. But the court refused to hear the case, leaving unchanged the debate over what to do about babies like Teresa. We're right at the a core question here about what constitutes human existence and how do we treat humans whose existence is different from ours or whose future is different from ours. The debate will not end with Teresa's death. There is a shortage of organs for infants who need them, and hundreds of babies like Teresa are born every year. This case has forced people to ask whether it is permissible to end one life to save another. Mark Potter, ABC News, Miami. He swears he's not angling for it. He promises to do it only if the people want him. But today, H. Ross Perot is looking like a man looking for a campaign. Today, Perot named his interim vice presidential running mate. The Texas billionaire says Vice Admiral James Stockdale's name will appear on the ballot with his. By naming a running mate, Perot can now get his name on the ballots in two dozen states that require independent candidates to name the number two. Stockdale is a former Vietnam POW and currently a senior research fellow with the Hoover Institution at Stanford University. Democrat Bill Clinton's turning it up a notch. Uh, with a week remaining before the New York primary, Clinton is challenging Jerry Brown to a series of debates. Clinton says he'll take on Brown anytime, anywhere. He's been particularly critical of Brown's proposal for a 13% flat tax. The two candidates are already scheduled to meet in a debate, debate tomorrow night in the Bronx. Brown welcomes Clinton's latest challenge to a series of debates as recently as last week. Clinton was telling aides he didn't want too many debates with Brown. Coming up next, the physical signs of aging don't stop at skin level. Dr. Dean Dell talks about the age of blood when we come back. You can go to one doctor that can take care of you, and he knows it really just about everything about you as far as your health. And not only your health, but that of your whole family. Family history can be very important in diagnosing certain health problems. We like to make it easier for you to find out about yours. Highland Hospital is offering a free brochure with a chart that you and your family can fill out. To get yours, call this number or stop by HCA Highland Hospital. Getting a blood test is a great way to screen for many ailments, and there are a set of standards for what your blood count means. But according to Dr. Dana Dell, if it's bad, it may not be you. It may be the person reading your results. To a patient, blood all looks pretty much the same. But to a doctor, minute changes in any of dozens of blood components can be the first sign of trouble. Blood work holds the key to diagnosing everything from anemia to zoster. If something is even a little off the normal range, your doctor might want to do more tests or even begin treatment. Now, if I told you I weighed 175 pounds, you wouldn't know whether I was fat, skinny, or in between, unless you had one other piece of information. My height, even my frame size. Well, when it comes to what is normal on a blood test, we never thought about other variables. In other words, everybody's numbers are supposed to be about the same. Well, guess what? A new report says that one of the most important variables of all can affect your blood, your age. Doctors involved in a 20-year health study noticed as people got older, their blood counts moved up or down in very regular patterns. Also, there were significant differences between men and women. The researchers were so impressed by the changes, they're now working on age and gender-specific tables for blood counts. Someday, doctors will consult the table before they know whether your blood is in the normal range. So while we're all used to the changes on the outside as we get older, get ready for the newest wrinkle in aging, old blood. I'm Dr. Dean Adell. Boy, George, Bl uh, George Blood, he's a pirate. <laughs> George Foreman certainly doesn't have old blood, does he? Yeah. <laughs> I know it. Yeah, George Foreman still has his sights set on regaining the heavyweight title. You'll hear from him, so stay with us.
In the semifinals of the National Invitation Tournament at New York tonight, Notre Dame and Utah. Notre Dame wins it 58 to 55. Florida loses to Virginia 62 to 56. The 1992 5A State Girls High School Basketball Champions were honored tonight in Bossier. The airline Lady Vikings won the state title. Earlier this month at Alexandria, by beating BTW of Shreveport 67 to 51, they finished with 30 wins, six losses, and they were led by Mary Lowry's 47 points in the championship game. Unfortunately, Mary had to miss tonight's banquet. She's in the hospital with appendicitis. When someone asks you about this team, say in 10 years, what do you think you'll say? Heart. Just the girls uh, weren't real big and uh, weren't real intimidating. And, uh, but they just play with a lot of heart. And uh, uh, when the time to get it done uh, came, they did it. You know, that's what I'll say. So when will you start thinking about next year? Probably tomorrow. Heavyweight contender George Foreman continues his quest to regain the title on April 11th in Las Vegas against Alex Stewart. He worked out today in Marshall, and Sam Schachter has the story. It's another silent night on Foreman Road in Marshall, Texas. But inside George Foreman's little gym, the silence is deafening for a boxer named Alex Stewart. He's not in the ring right now, but he will be in the ring against Foreman in 12 days in Las Vegas. I'm in a position. I'm fighting a guy who's lost a couple. He needs to get back in there. And he's looking at me as an old guy. He can really get a reputation on. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've got to be real careful. This is, the, this is the fight I've got to be more careful than any other fight. Training for the Stewart fight is a little bit different than training for the Evander Holyfield fight. For Holyfield, he charged while he sparred. For this fight, he's boxing while he spars. That's a little different. But then there's also this little jogging thing he does. He pulls a truck while he jogs. Pretty fun. Do you train for every fighter differently? You have to. This time around, I don't have to use to be so aggressive in the ring. I just have to make sure I get boxers to keep my defenses intact. Mm -hmm. Then I think I'll be in good shape for Alex Stewart. But each fighter you got to take and, hey, this is different. But you get yourself in the best shape first. As you can tell, this training stuff can get a bit tiring. Especially when you're going 10 to 12 rounds a day in preparation for the Stewart fight. They say the legs, by the way, are the first thing to go. Uh, these trainers would have these guys move around, move around. Then finally I hear them saying, his legs, his old legs are tired. Get on him, he's old. I used to say, oh my God. <laughs> I didn't realize I was that old. So a lot of times I used to be intimidated by what the trainers were saying to the guys from the corner. Did it make you laugh at all or were you just like... <laughs> it made me start thinking. I said, my legs do hurt a little bit. <laughs> so oh boy. <laughs> and finally it's over. On a night where an hour's workout seems more like a day's workout on a silent night in Marshall, Texas. Sam Schachter, Nightcast Sports. The New Orleans Saints today decided to keep linebacker Pat Swilling. They matched Detroit's $5.6 million contract offer. Swilling accepted the Lions offer last week, and the Saints could have let him go in return for Detroit's first-round draft picks in 1992 and 93. Terry Eberhard, a local physical therapist and holder of a number of national water ski records, is now officially in charge of Shreveport's annual professional water skiing tournament. He became chairman of Champion Lake Pro Classic Incorporated, in January of this year, Bill Hanna, who has promoted the tournament in the past, went through bankruptcy proceedings and is no longer involved in the event. And that's sports. All right. Well, looking ahead to tomorrow, here's some events on the news calendar for the last day of March. The Red Cross Health Fair continues at Pierre Bossier Mall. Tomorrow night, Caddo's Parental Review Committee holds its final sex ed meeting. Also tomorrow night, the American Boy Choir performs at St. Mark's Episcopal Church in Shreveport. And a final look at the weather. Well, chilly tonight. Temperatures in the low 40s. Tomorrow we we'll get some sunshine. We'll be back to the low 70s in no time. Great. That's our news. Thanks for watching. Good night. We'll see you tomorrow.